It's TK Friday again. Today, it's mask painting through selections. Also, did you know there's a new update for the TK8 plugin for Photoshop? This is version 1.1.1. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. What you're seeing on the screen right now is the Good Light Journal. This is a blog from Tony Kuiper. I'm going to link it in the description below this video. If you're not subscribed to the Good Light Journal blog, you need to do it. So click on that link and click this subscribe button. And that way, every time Tony comes out with a new blog, you'll know about it. And this latest version of the blog talks about the new TK8 version 1.1. Point one. There's a lot of really good information about this new update here, so I encourage you to go and check it all out. It even tells you how to get the new update if you haven't already installed it. If you don't yet own the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, or if you want to get some training videos, I'll link you to the page where you can do just that. And if you use my promo code DK15, you'll save 15% off any of your purchases. Now it's time to do some mask painting through selections. By the way, you can download this image. Just go into the description below the video and find the uh, image download link. Download the image and then you'll be able to follow along with me. Before we get started, let's have a roadmap to what we're going to be doing today. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to crop the image in just a little wee bit. So that's the first thing I want to do. And then what I want to do is these branches are all a bit too light to me, and they are drawing our attention away from the red-tailed hawk. So I want to darken those down a little bit. And again, we'll be uh, mask painting through selections. And then this branch right here, I'm just going to remove it because I don't like it. Okay, and then after that, we will, this area around here, we're going to darken it and darken underneath this branch down here, kind of kind of to give it a vignette look here a little bit. And then after that, I want to uh, lighten up this area here because it's going give, to give it a nice little glow in the forest here, a little bit of light, which is going to kind of accent the red-tailed hawk here. You'll see it looks really cool. And then the last thing I want to do is lighten up the overall hawk and i want to lighten up the eye here and give it more saturation as well as this yellow area on the nose here and down on the talons and then i want to add clarity to the overall bird and that's pretty much the road map we'll start out by cropping this a little bit i'm going to grab the crop tool i'm just using the original ratio we have different ratios and things we can use here but i'm using the original ratio i just want to pull this side in just a little bit something like that, and maybe pull this side in just a little wee bit. I just like that crop a little better and click the check here. Now I have delete crop pixels checked on. I generally do it that way. Some people don't like that, some people do, but I, that's generally the way I do it. Okay, so there it is, there's our crop. And if you don't wanna crop it, you think it looks great just the way it is, leave it the way it is, it's totally up to you. Now I'm gonna get rid of this little branch. I'm just using the lasso tool, drawing a selection around here a loose selection. And then I'm gonna use this button right here, which opens up the fill dialog. And make sure you have it set to content aware, fill, and then just click okay. And just like that, that goes away. Now we can deselect that selection by clicking right here, or you could do a command or control D. This area looks a little funky here, so what I may do is just circle around this with the lasso tool and try another content aware fill and see what we get right there. Okay, and that looks better. And then Command or Control D, or I just use this button right here. And that looks pretty good, and I'm happy with that. I really like working with a roadmap, you know, because it helps you to stay focused on what you want to achieve in your image. And let me know in the comments section below what you think about using a roadmap. Are you using roadmaps in your images? I'd like to know. Before I start with adjustments, I'll set myself up for masking success. What I want to do is save out this hawk as a channel. I'm going to save out the top portion of the hawk the tail by itself, and then a combination of the top portion of the hawk and the tail, because I'll be needing them a little later in this edit. I'm just using my object selection tool in the lasso mode. In case you're wondering why I didn't use select subject, it was selecting the branch as well as the hawk, and to me this was a lot quicker and easier to do. Now I'm zooming in, and to add to my selection, I'm just holding down my shift key and adding to the selection. If I need to subtract from the selection, I'll hold down the option or alt key like over here and subtract this section i'm holding down the option key and clicking around here and now the shift to add this little area in right there 
and I'll just look around and make sure everything looks okay. That's the top portion of the hawk. Now I need to save this, but we can look at our selection to see how good it is by clicking right here on the multi-mass panel. And we could take a look at that selection. And I think everything looks re really good. There's a little area it missed right here, but that's no big deal. I could paint that in with white paint if I wanted to, but I'm happy with that. Now I can go ahead and save this selection right here. So I'm going to click save and I'm going to call this Hawk Top. Okay, makes sense. It's the top of the Hawk and click OK. And now it's saved as a channel. And now I can just X out of here. Okay, and there is my selection right there. Now I need to select out the tail, which I'll do next. And with that same object selection tool, I'm just going to draw a loose selection around that tail. Just like so. And I got it right there. And I'm going to go ahead this time and click right here uh, to save that. So right here, and I'm going to call this tail and click OK. And now that's saved as a channel. And now I'm going to combine the tail with the top of the hawk and I'll show you how I'll do that next. Let me go ahead and fit this image to the screen by clicking this button right here. And we're going to come up to my channels. Now here's a little change with the new update. So click here. Things look different now, right? The list here is, this is like an infinite amount of items you can add as uh, save channels, which is really cool. Before you could only save, I can't remember the amount, but just a certain amount of channels. But now you can save as many channels as you need, which is really nice. And then you can just keep scrolling through the list till you find the one you need. So what I want to do is grab the Hawk Top and click the mass calculator, click the plus, X out of here, go back to my channels and click the tail and click equals and check it out. I've selected the entire Hawk. Now I want to save this. So let's click right here where it says save. And we're going to call this, let's call it uh, Complete, for lack of a better title, Hawk. And click OK. And that'll be saved to the channels. Let's X out of here. So now if I come back to my channels, you'll see I have Hawk Top, Tail, and Complete Hawk. Let's X out of here for now. Now let's get to work with some adjustments. I think the first thing I want to do is darken this area around here. You know, give it sort of that vignette look and down under here. I want to do that first because then I'll know how much darkening I need to make on these sticks here. So that's kind of my reasoning why I actually want to do that first. I know in my list I showed you I was going to darken sticks first, but I think in hindsight I should darken this area first. This is where the mask painting through selections comes in. But the first thing I want to do, and follow me closely here, I'm going to grab a color grading tool, click the plus to apply it. And basically what I want to do is get the mid-tone block, the gray block, and just darken this area as, as much as I think I need, okay? I can always come back and readjust this later. But maybe maybe somewhere right around in this area right here. Now, follow me closely. I'm going to shut this eye off here. Because I want to make a luminosity mask, but I want to base it on the original image and not on this adjustment. So I'm shutting the adjustment off. And then I'm going to come up. Let's X out of the color grading tool. Come up and let's find a luminosity mask that we want to use. Now, if I use a lights one, I'll be mainly darkening the light areas, which is kind of what I want to do. Or I could maybe go with a um, mid-tones one or a mid-tones two and just darken down the mid-tones. But I'm thinking lights one because I don't want to darken the darker areas any darker than they already are, at least not too much. And I think a lights one will do that for me. So I'm going to go with a lights one. Now, remember, I'll be mask painting through selection. So I want to protect my hawk. So what do you think I can do to protect the hawk? Mask calculator. Yeah, I think you're on the right track here. So let's click on mask calculator. Let's subtract the hawk. So click the minus, X out of here. Let's go to my channels and let's click on complete hawk and click equals. So now you'll notice that the hawk has been subtracted from my lights one. Pretty cool, right? This is one of the new improvements on the uh, new version of the TK8 plugin for Photoshop update. Now you'll notice the color grading layer is turned off, right? After I choose how I want to output this, and I'm going to use mask painting, right? So I want to output this as a black layer, and it's going to give me a white brush because I'm going to paint my own mask. So I'm going to click this, but watch what happens. After I click it, you'll see this eye gets turned back on. So let me click right here. Right now, I'm painting through a selection. I have a black mask, and it turns it back on. So that's pretty neat, right? And you can see I have a selection by the selection indicator here. And now all I need to do is get myself a pretty large brush, soft edge brush. And I'm going to start out, I'm going to try 100% here. 
And with 100%, just start darkening this area down. Now, remember, the real dark areas will be protected. I can go over my hawk. I don't have to worry. Now, each time I lift my brush, I'm going to be adding more paint and a stronger effect. And that's one of the cool things about painting through a selection. We can keep building it up slowly. So as much of that darkening as I think I need, and I can always go back and readjust that color grading tool as well. So let's take a look. Here is the before, and here's the after. You notice my hawk is protected. Let's say we wanted to readjust the color grading tool. Here's what you need to do. Make sure you have the color grading layer you want to adjust active. Come up and click on the color grading tool icon. Now you'll notice in the color grading area right here, there's no blocks in here indicating we have not actually turned this on here, okay? So we can either turn on the adjustment we made by clicking right here where you represent uh, shadows, midtones, and highlights. Click here and you can see here, now there's our shadows. But if I click on shadows, nothing happens here because I didn't make an adjustment. But if I click on midtones, you can see, oh, the midtones have been pulled back. So now at this point, I can take this midtone slider and darken it up some more by pulling it back more. Or if it's too dark, I can lighten it up a little bit. But maybe right there. So here is the before and here is the after. So that's looking good. Well, let's continue. Let's X out of this color grading tool. The next thing I want to do is lighten up this area all around in here. Now I'm going to do that first because these branches, these light branches, I'm going to have to darken them right. So I might as well lighten some of this area first. And then if I need extra darkening, I'll be able to adjust accordingly. We're going to need another color grading tool, but first we have a selection active here. So I want to deactivate that selection by clicking this icon right here because I'm going to grab another color grading tool but I've got to click this plus. And if I would have left that selection in there, when I click the plus, I wouldn't have had a white mask. It would have had that selection from the last adjustment in it, which wouldn't have been what we wanted. I'm going to use the same technique that I used to darken this area here. So what I'm going to do is click on the midtones. And I generally find I use the midtones a lot. This time, instead of darkening, I want to lighten. So this is going to be an overall lightening. And I'm just going to get a rough idea where I think it's going to look good. And I think right about there. But I don't want to over lighten these really light areas in here. So I got to pick a proper mask for that. So let's shut off this eye. And now we can base our mask according to the image right now. Let's X out of the color grading tool for now. And let's come up to the luminosity mask. Click this. And, you know, we could use a lights one, but it's going to affect this really light area here. So I don't want that. So I got to find a mask that I think will work. So I'm thinking maybe like a uh, mid-tones 2, maybe. See, that's going to protect that area. Or maybe let's try like a mid-tones 3. Yeah, I think a mid-tones 3 is going to work out for me pretty well here. So I have a mid-tones 3. Let's do a calculation and subtract out the bird because we want to protect the bird, the red-tailed hawk. So let's click on the calculator. Let's minus and let's X out of here. Let's go to my channels, select the complete hawk, and let's click equals. And so now we have that selection, the midtones three and subtracting out the hawk. So that's good. And now all we need to do is output this. We're gonna output to a black mass, painting through a selection with white paint. So this is the icon we wanna click. And now we're gonna have a black mask. We have a selection, we have a white paint brush. I'm gonna go ahead and make my canvas a little smaller. Let's click this minus like one time here. And I'm going to make my brush pretty large, like a brush around that size. Because remember, I'm going to light this whole area right up in here. I don't have to worry about if I go over the hawk. I'm just going to left click with my mouse like one time right here. See how it lightens it? I'm going to click it again. There's two lights. One more time, three. Let's take a look. Here is the before and here is the after. So the before and the after. But see how that just nicely lights up that little area? If it was too light up here, I can get the opposite color of black and just give it one tap right there and just back that off just a little bit. Now, well, let's take a look at the mask. Let's click this icon. Here's what the mask looks like. Okay, let's look at the image. Here is the before and here is the after. Now we can go back and make some readjustments here. Make sure you have the layer you want to readjust active, which it is, and come up and click on the color grading tool. And then what we need to do is, again, nothing is active, right? So we can click here and click the block that we think we adjusted, which in my case was the midtones. And you can see there it's lighter. So now I can take this and I can drag it more to the right and lighten it up a little more, even more. 
or back it off a little bit. And I think maybe I want a little bit on the light side. So maybe right there. Here is the before and here is after. Now remember, you can always go back later and readjust things. And if you want to, if this area in here was too light, like this area right here, what you could do is deselect your selection by clicking right here. And let's just get, let me zoom in here so we can see. Let's get a black brush. Let's get my brush tool here. Get a nice small brush here. And I'm going to take it down to about 30%. And I'm just going to paint right over there a couple times. See, I can just ease off in that just a little bit. So I can paint right on that mask if I want to. But there you go. Again, here is the before. And here is the after. But I like that nice little light area in there. Next, we're going to start working on the branches here. If we want to see the overall before and after, we can option or alt click on the background layer. Here's the before and here's the after. See how nicely the bird is being focused upon by the lighting we're adjusting here. And by the way, I made myself an action called before and after that does the alter option click for me. So if I click right here on my uh, TK combo panel, you can see here's the before and here's the after. If you're interested in knowing how I made this, I could show you this on a future tutorial. Let me know in the comment section below. And now on to the branches. We're going to darken up some of these light branches. So what we're going to do is let's go up to the top color grading layer. What we want to do is click the plus here at another color grading tool. And what we want to do is darken the light area. So let's go ahead and click on midtones again. I'm just going to darken back. A decent amount here. I'm going to go a little extra strong because I can all because I'm going to build this adjustment up, but something maybe right around there. I think it'll be good. Now I'm going to shut this eye off because I want to base my mask on the image the way it looks right now. Let's X out of the color grading tool. This time I think I'm going to use a zone mask. So let's click this icon right here and I'm going to sample some of the lighter areas on here, like right here. Click OK. And then what I'll do is let's lighten that area up a little bit here. I'm going to work with this slider here and just tighten up the uh, selection a little bit somewhere right around in there. And then we can adjust this here a little bit for the zone one way or the other to make it wider. I think, I think right around there looks pretty good. And now all we need to do is output this. Black layer, white brush, painting through a selection. Click this icon right here. And there you see it. Well, there's our black layer. And we have a selection indicator. Now all we have to do is make our adjustments. By the way, if you want to see what that selection looks like, you have this icon right here. You can click it and you can see there's your selection. Okay? Click this again and it loads the selection back up and it hides the marching ants. Just thought I'd point that out. That's a nice little tip. Now, this is very important. After you've clicked this, you have to make your mask active again. So click on your mask and now you can start painting. So that's kind of another important tip. If you use this, you have to make the mask active again. And now I'll just start painting at 100% opacity on these light areas and we'll just darken them up. Each time I lift up my brush and paint again, I'm adding more paint down so I can build this up and get it very accurate, just the right amount that I need. I'm going to continue painting this image here and uh, all these branches. I'm working on the big branch here that the hawk is sitting on right now, but it's going to take a long, it's not going to take a long time. It's going to take a while and you're not going to want to watch me do the entire thing. So what I'll do is go ahead and pause the video for now and I'll finish this up and get back with you. But that's all I'm doing is painting all these light areas. Okay. And fixing it up, but I'll be right back with you. And through the magic of editing, I am back. Here is the before, but you see how your eye goes to all these light branches and so on, even on the, on the branch that the hawk is perched on. Here is the after but you see how now your eye is more focused on the red-tailed hawk, which is what we want. I'm gonna go ahead and deselect my selection by clicking this icon here. The next thing I wanna do is add some clarity to the hawk by itself. But to do that, I'm gonna to go to the TK actions and click on the clarity action. And what I wanna do is adjust it. It's using a high pass filter. And I find for the hawk somewhere around 20 is gonna be pretty good. I'm gonna click okay. 
Now here we can take a look. Here is the before and here's the after. Now let's put in clarity everywhere, but I only want it on the Hawk. And I want to use a uh, luminosity mask to apply it so it's not super strong. Right now it's very strong and I don't like it. So here's what, I'm, what I'll do. Let's shut off this eye again. So now we're going to base our mask on the actual image the way it looks right now. Let's go up to my channels and let's select the complete hawk. All right, so there's our complete hawk. Let's get a mask calculator, intersect it. Let's X out of here. Let's intersect it with the luminosity mask. And I think it's going to be a midtones. Let's check out midtones two. I want it a little stronger, so I'm going to try midtones three. Yeah, I think midtones three is going to work. Let's go ahead and click equals. And now you can see I've selected the hawk. And now all we need to do is apply it. Now to apply it to that clarity layer, we click this icon right here. That'll apply it right to the layer. Let me go ahead and zoom in so you can really see it now. Okay, so we're looking at the hawk. Here is the before and here is the after. Next, I want to add a little bit more saturation to the talons, to the eye, and to this area of the nose and lighten it up slightly. I'll use a hue saturation adjustment to do it. So I'm going to click this right here, get a hue saturation layer. I'm just going to take my saturation and I'm looking at the eye mainly right now. I'm going to pull this up a decent amount and lighten it up just a little wee bit. Maybe like a three or a four, maybe a slight bit more saturation. Okay, now I'm going to shut this eye off again because I want to base my mask on this image the way it is right now. So what we're going to do now is come up and grab a color masking tool. Click this icon right here and let's click on the eye right in here and find this color and click OK. And that gives us a nice selection. Let's lighten that up a good bit here. And I think that's pretty good. I may narrow that in just a little tiny bit. Just like that. I think that's good. Now we're going to output it to a black layer using a white brush and painting through a selection. And just like that. And now we can simply paint our adjustment in. I'm starting out with 100% opacity. I'm just going to paint this eye in. I'm going to give it one pass, give it another pass, maybe one more. And that looks really nice. Now in this area of the nose, I'm going to cut my opacity down to about 40% and try this. Yeah, I think that looks good right up into here. I'm going to give it one more right here. So that looks good right there. I don't want to overdo that. And now I'm going to come down to these talons and I'm going to, th I think I'll go to 30% and let's just paint over this. 30%, just to, you know, give them a little extra saturation. I'm going to hit it one more time. One, two, one, two, one, and two. Give it the old one, two punch. Now here is the before. And here is the after. I have one final thing to do. Let me deselect my selection and let's fit this to the screen by clicking this icon. Let's take a look at the overall hue and saturation on the beacon talons and the eye. Here's the before and here's the after. If it's too strong, you have this opacity slider too. You can take this and pull this back a little bit if you felt it was too strong. Let me just take it back to about like 90%. Here's the before and here's the after. Last thing I want to do is just lighten up the hawk just a little wee bit. Now to lighten the hawk, I'm going to come up to my channels, select the complete hawk, and let me get a mask calculator, intersect this with, and I want to get a luminosity mask here. And I think I want to work on the midtones of the hawk. So let's go, let's try midtones two, let's try midtones three. I just want to lighten them up just a little wee bit. Let's click equals, and now we can see we just have the hawk with a midtone luminosity mask attached to it, which is pretty cool. A little different technique this time. We're going to go right to a color grading tool by clicking right here. And all we're going to do is click on the midtones and just lighten him up just a little bit. Not too much. That's probably too much. Here is the before and here is the after. So before and after. Yeah, and I think that's good. Just a slight lightening. But here we go. Now, if we click... Option or alt click on the background layer. We can see the before and the after, but see how your attention is drawn to the hawk. And don't forget, I have this before and after now an action I made. Let me know if you want to see how to do that. Leave me know in the comment section below. Here's the before and here's the after. It's just nice to be able to click that. It's really quick and easy. 
Well, there it is, everyone. This one went a little bit long, and I hope you stayed with me the whole way. If you did, you're hearing me now. And if you did, you learned a lot of new stuff today. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click the bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.